how's the trips? You came down just the other day. Uh, well, it's a long way from Australia. A very I'm long sitting way. Sitting a long, long time in an aeroplane. It's very boring. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, some people say, "What on earth are you going around the world <laughs> talking to people with fish tanks?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm here because mm -hmm. reef aquaria are so important. Yes. And um, just about the only subject mm -hmm. which would drag me. Drag all, you all anywhere around? All the way across the yeah. I'm going in, so back again I go. That's pretty awesome. Mm. So, one of the, and one of the talks or something I listened to you before, you were saying that you used to always sneak away and do night diving. Mm. You still do that? Off oh, on yes. your own? Yes. Yeah, I have not done it the night dive yet, but it's on my list. Um, it's a peculiarity of mine, I guess. Yeah. But um, I love beauty and mm. I love excitement. Mm. And there's actually nothing you've read about my night diving. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just remember you're like, yep, I don't tell anybody. I sneak uh, up all by myself. Yes. No one's there to bug me. <laughs> yes, I, that just that breaks every rule in the book. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was uh, receiving a, an award in Alaska, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was from the American Association for Scientific Diving. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, yeah, they gave me a lifetime award. First nice. non American to get it. And mm -hmm. off to Alaska I went. And they wouldn't let me go diving there because they didn't have all the tickets and all yeah. the paperwork done. I was probably the only person not allowed to go diving. And I thought that joke really annoyed like, me. I've so, probably done more times than all so of you. I wanted to see the giant kelp. And, um, mm -hmm. and so I gave uh, a talk, my, my talk as mm -hmm. usual. And uh, I talked about diving alone yeah. on the outer face <laughs> of the Great Barrier Reef. And I thought that would horrify all the uh, bureaucrats yeah. that were there. But it didn't. It backfired. They thought it was great. Oh, that's great. So you're like, see, <laughs> so, I, I can so dive. It was so funny, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so you're from Australia, yep. obviously. You grew up on the great, beautiful Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. Well, I didn't grow up there. I went no. there as a, went there as a kid. Okay. Mm. Still a nice place to go diving and grow. Ah, uh, yes. Inspirational. Sadly, in BC, there. I guess on the coast there is, but I live by a lake, so there's no diving locally. But I absolutely love it. Mm. So, question for you. With I know with a lot of coral reefs, how do you think there is certain coral species that I know, I've seen some people that are trying to take them from hotter areas and transplant them around to make a more hardier species of coral. Do you think there's hope for that to actually bring in different species and kind of regrow the reefs? There are a few species that are quite mm -hmm. tolerant to, to bleaching. Yeah. And we know what they are now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they are different in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, we've got about eight, something like that, yep. that are being studied in detail to find out why they are resistant to bleaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's very important. But um, these species are not going to be useful for um, repopulating reefs oh, no. to any great extent because a reef is an ecosystem with lots and lots right. and lots of species which interact. In fact, more species than it found anywhere else on this planet. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so um, um, although we can find these resistant corals, they are not going to yeah. create a reef. The other thing that makes me wonder a little bit is I know with all the coral spawning that they're trying to do in a lab and get them spawn and potentially mixing corals together, if there's going to be some new hybrid corals that yep. potentially might survive all this, which makes me wonder in, you know, 100 years from now, if it's going to be, they will be corals that will survive on the reef, but it's going to be a whole new different set of hybrids. I don't know, it's weird to think about it that way, but... That's probably the most optimistic outlook you can have. Yeah. In other words, Wishful if you thinking. don't have that, you won't have anything. Yeah. Hey, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Yes. But um, that may help a little. Mm -hmm. But um, if we destroy the coral reefs of our planet, mm -hmm. we are destroying the home mm -hmm. of uh, somewhere between a quarter and a third of all marine species. Yeah. And that means, that would mean, uh, ecological chaos, mm -hmm. collapse of the oceans. Actually, one interesting thing you said last night too was that you said the effects of the CO2 in the ocean now was from what happened 20 years ago. Yep. Like, is that much of a delay? Yep. Why is that? Or how does that well, if you get a, um, like a saucepan of water mm -hmm. and put it on your stove on low yep. heat, dip your finger in it, mm -hmm. just as the temperature was when you put your in, yeah. filled from the tap. Mm -hmm. uh, it come back a um, quarter of an hour later mm -hmm. and it might have equilibrated with the light under it. Yep. It'll be warm, mm -hmm. but it takes that amount of time. And so does the okay. oceans. Same thing. Just such we a large we put water. this warm blanket around the earth mm -hmm. and takes the, it, the, it's warming the oceans. Mm -hmm. um, and that will take about 
it takes about 20 years for the oceans to yeah. somehow get into balance okay. with the warming. Okay, that makes sense. I guess mm. it's just such a large body of water for tax well, shifts. Thermal inertia is, is huge. enormous. Yes, yes, yes. beyond belief. Yes. Oh, that makes so, sense. Yeah, yeah. So, as I mean, the general public world, everything, the ocean does provide so much life to us. It is, I mean, aside from reducing CO2, which is obviously one of the biggest things, is there any other big things people can do to help prevent the decline of reefs? Uh, it all comes down to CO2, yep. it really does. Um, we can help mm -hmm. in other ways, um, controlling crown of thorn starfish mm -hmm. or pollution of whatever yep. form. Um, these things help. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a healthy environment for coral reefs to recover. Yep. Now I talked about last night, mm -hmm. uh, uh, reefs that can recover, and get knocked down and recover and mm -hmm. so on. It's like having a forest fire. Uh, the fire can wreck the forest, but mm -hmm. if if the forest is basically healthy, it's, it's yep. growing in a forest, that, it, it's growing in the right rainfall and so mm -hmm. on, it'll come back. Yep. But there is a, and so if it happened once, fine, it'll recover. Mm -hmm. But if it happens every 10, 15 years, yep. it'll recover less and less. Every time. Until it becomes just weed species. Mm -hmm. And we have weed species in the coral world. Mm -hmm. Those that get in quickly mm -hmm. and get wiped out. Yep. Um, it's, but that changes the ecology of the whole thing. and coral reefs more than anything on land is all a matter of ecology it's all a matter of species being together mm -hmm. in symbiosis of one thing with another that's what the marine world does yep. and so the frequency of the return mm -hmm. of the damage mm -hmm. is critical yep mm. do you think that the people that are out there replanting reefs and trying to create those little frag trees and grow stuff and redistribute do you think that's going to make a big enough impact to affect it or help it? I think everything helps. Yep, it all, um, it all adds up. It, well, um, it certainly helps in areas where mm -hmm. tourists go. Yep. So tourist operators mm -hmm. are doing this with reefs and, and successfully. That's awesome to see. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but um, if you think of the Great Bay Reef, for example, mm -hmm. it's the size of Italy. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't really, it yeah. doesn't really help yeah. in, in the bigger scale. Of That's things. true, but this is not, probably not practical on a bigger scale, but I was watched one, I don't know if it's a study or what they did, but they were injecting nano air bubbles in the water for a couple hours before the sun came up and it was taking away a lot of the CO2s from around the coral. Oh, yes. And it was apparently helping them re, not, just use it, um, less susceptible to being bleaching and having those effects on them from that, which yeah. I thought was kind of interesting, just removing the localized CO2 from around them. Yeah, I don't think that will make any difference. Actually. No, not that you could do on a giant scale. I don't and not even that scale nope. because the CO2 comes from the algae in the tissues of the coral. Yep. And it comes from sunlight. Mm -hmm. And as long as you've got the algae and the sunlight, they'll produce the yep. carbon dioxide that's doing the damage. Yep, so well, it's sorry, they'll produce the oxygen that's doing yep. the damage. That was actually something interesting. Mm. It, uh, the corals mm -hmm. don't die from heat. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they die from oxygen poisoning. Yep. Well, they start dying and they expel their algae because mm -hmm. it's a pathogen. Yep. And... Um, they expel the algae, but they're dependent on the algae. Mm -hmm. So it's suicide. It is. And that's what, the, it really is, and that's what they're doing. That is crazy. Uh, because they haven't been exposed to this in their, mm -hmm. in their current genetic history. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's been times in, in the Earth's past where the oceans have been much warmer than they are now. Yep. But the corals have got symbioses that deal with it. Mm -hmm. But they haven't this time. Yeah. Um, if all this was going on over uh, an interval of, say, 10, 100,000 years, mm -hmm coral reefs the manager all right they just change their algae or they they would get a uh, they evolve a, a different sort of symbiosis mm -hmm. and they carry on yep. we're doing it so quickly yeah it's it sad. speed it's, is everything it's sad. Mm. and that's the problem mm -hmm. no do you think because i mean we're all here because we love corals you from a very young age and it's amazing how many you've actually identified and what we all call them now do you think um all the corals that we have, like hobbyists around the world and aquarists and aquariums, could potentially repopulate from the stuff that the ones that may be extinct at a certain point, just from ones well, that are still keeping captivity? That's that's certainly something that we have to take very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, consider <clears throat> um, so many terrestrial animals now mm -hmm. are kept in zoos. They've gone extinct in the wild. <clears throat> now, um, that's going to happen in, in the marine world. Yep. It's going to happen to corals. Mm -hmm. And there will be a time when a lot of species, increasing number of species, mm -hmm. only exist in, in reef aquaria, yep. and that's a tremendous job. And I don't mean, I don't mean people's personal aquarium. Mm -hmm. I mean huge areas yeah. that are controlled mm -hmm. and 
parts of the oceans that are, are controlled. Mm -hmm. The lights control and the temperature and so on. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't happen, they go extinct. Yeah. That's kind of scary. But. It's very scary. Yeah. So in one aspect, these large aquarium facilities could almost turn into a coral bank to hopefully repopulate future reefs. That's what's happening. That's yep. what people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just keeping the existing species going, but it is training hybrids that may yep. be better at it. Yep. Hopefully more resilient. It's terrible to think about that way, but um, mm -hmm. it's basically coral gardening. Yep. And uh, it's going to have to happen. Yep, it's true. Because nothing else is going to save corals. No. And honestly, I, I personally think that's probably what it's going to be is a lot of the hybrid corals are what's going to end up rebuilding the reefs that are well, more resilient. That's genetic studies, and mm -hmm. really the earth has got to have them. And we've got to do yeah. these, this, this mm -hmm. work. And it's, it's well and truly started now. And <clears throat> the technology that allows corals to be kept in an aquarium all comes from hobbyists. Yep. It all of it does. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's true. Mm. <laughs> and so that's why I'm so keen on this whole scene. No, it's good. Mm. Well, I appreciate you coming out here. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It's inspiring. Mm. Uh, done some awesome stuff. Oh. Yep. Thank you, you, you sir. Do it.